You ready? All right, you ready? Welcome to the congregation of Yahweh. We're here on the uh, first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread during uh, uh, the, the springtime feast. Um, today's message has is, is kind of been uh, a couple weeks in the making. Uh, Yahweh's just been dealing with me on, on some things and bringing things to my mind. Uh, recently, my well water started to uh, change in color periodically. It would, uh, the tint of the water would, uh, would darken. Sometimes it, it almost looked like a light colored tea. And uh, during this time period, well actually let me, let me back that up. Also, the taste of the water sometimes didn't, didn't taste quite right. And uh, we've had a lot of rain and the the water levels up are, are real high and we had we had the well tested and it, it had been contaminated somehow and also during this time period I heard a message on the radio and uh, a, a, a man gave an illustration of someone starving in a desert excuse me not uh, thirsting in a desert needing water and somebody came along and gave them a glass of water and said you can drink this water or you can use the water to prime your well pump but you only get one glass of water and so he could have chosen to drink it or he could try to prime as well and if it primed correctly if it did work he would get access to all the water down in the well and so he chose to prime the well and the man was using the illustration as a motivation to tithe he was saying, you know, you only have this little bit, but if you go ahead and, and, and give back, you'll have access to all the resources. Which that's not the angle that I'm, I'm using. You better not. <laughs> yeah, that's not the angle I was using. But my thought was, what if that one glass of water that you used to prime your well was contaminated water? You're still drinking dirty water. So just because you got it primed and you've tapped into the source doesn't make it clean. What if that person gave you a dirty glass of water? But today's message is entitled The Water of the Word. We'll go through some illustrations in the scriptures about the water and the word. Yahweh teaches us through earthly things, through physical things and he gives parables and illustrations uh, just a few examples uh, obviously he says that the water is the word and and the spirit is the living water he spreads seed and he also said that the seed was the word he plants the seed in the soil which is the heart of man which can receive the word where the word can take root the plants that come up out of the soil, being that a seed reproduces after its kind, it's also consisting of the word. The fruit on the plant is also a reproduction of the word. Harvesting the plants that contain the word. Pruning parts off of the plant that doesn't have the word. And casting it into the fire. Grafting into a tree by the word. Remaining on the vine by the word and uh, there's also different phases of the harvest that are taught throughout the feast season and it all goes back to the word and uh, I was in the right place at the right time in my life and was blessed with the opportunity to be a wastewater operator and also a drinking water operator. It's my job to take the water that humans pollute and get rid of and I have to turn it into 
a safe water to go back to the earth to make it safe for the environment and I'll also get the water and make it palatable drinkable and safe but if you think about it what's wrong with our water we are we destroy it we pollute it we take things out of it and we put things in it and we make it harmful for ourselves and it's the same thing with his word his word was so pure when it came out of his mouth but men get hold of it they add things to it and it makes it not safe they take things out of it and it makes it not safe when the rain comes down in its purest form it hits the highest tops the mountains his word came out of his mouth from the mountain and when it flows from the mountain the closer to its source it's the most pristine it goes into the rivers and the creeks and streams and the ponds and the lakes and eventually makes it back to the sea and evaporates goes back up into the clouds and it repeats the cycle but in that cycle we human beings pull stuff out of it we pull the life out of it and we put our pollutants back into it so everybody downstream gets the contamination that we've done to it but what the best thing for us to do is to get back to its source or you can go into the depths, into the deep, and bring out the cool water that has been filtered through layers and layers of earth until it finally gets down to its purest form. And when I think of earth, I think of he took the dust of the earth and made us. We have to filter out the water to get into its depth, into its, its purest form. And if there is a discoloration in the water, you can only see it in the presence of light. You can't see discolored water in the dark. There has to be light there. You can't know if water tastes bad unless you've actually tasted good water. So some people have been accustomed to drink dirty water all their life and they don't know the difference because they've never tasted clean water. And it's the same thing out there in the religious circles. They are drinking contaminated, polluted water and they don't know the difference because they've never had it from its source. And if you want the purest water from its source, source, what did the Messiah say? Man shall not live by bread of alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Yahweh. So if you want the purest water, the word, you got to get it straight from his mouth. If it can't, came out of his mouth, that's the best way. But instead, we get a polluted, deluded word that comes out of the preacher's mouth. And everybody said, thus saith the Lord. But it's been twisted. It's been added to and it's been taken from. Um, and there's several, several processes that water can go through to get it back to its original state, best state, healthy state. Heat being one of them so much heat that it destroys the pathogens in the water well Yahweh is a consuming fire hallelujah um, and then we mentioned being filtered by the earth different chemical processes but the thing when it goes through a, a chemical process there's still traces of the chemicals in the water it's best to get it back to the source now let's go through a, a few scriptures concerning the water and the word um, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32, starting in verse 1. Give ear, O you heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain 
my speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. His doctrine will come down like the rain distilled as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, starting in verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth, and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. His word that goes out of his mouth will be just like the rains. And if we actually study the water cycles and all the illustrations that he gives us in scripture, he's teaching us earthly things, teaching us through earthly things. Uh, James chapter 5. <coughs> Starting in verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Master. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Master draweth nigh. Now let's go to John chapter 3. Starting in verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yeshua by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except Elohim be with him. Yeshua answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of Yahweh. Nicodemus saith unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Yeshua answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Yeshua answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? So here he says that a man must be born of the water and the spirit. Now some people have differences of opinion as to what it means to be born of the water and the spirit. Some believe that the water is the word, and some believe it's talking about a natural birth. Um, and I'm not going to go either way here, but I'm just using this as an illustration, and we'll go through some other illustrations of the water and the word. Let's go over to John chapter 4, starting in verse 10. 
Okay, this is the woman at the well. Let me back it up to verse um, 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Yeshua, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Yeshua saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Yeshua answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of Elohim, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Yeshua answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give, him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Yeshua saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Yeshua said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidst thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Um, let me pause right there. But he's telling this woman that the water that he provides is a, a water that you'll never thirst again and it springs up into everlasting life. Let's flip over to chapter 7. Starting in verse 37. John seven thirty-seven. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Yeshua was not yet glorified. So he's saying, if you believe on me as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, and the living water is the Spirit. Now let's read a few verses about the Spirit. Chapter 14 of John. Starting in verse 15, 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Let's flip over to verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. The Spirit of truth will teach and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. The spirit of truth teaches you all things 
and brings all things to your remembrance what I have said. Well, what did he say? The words that I speak are not mine, but his that sent me. The doctrine I speak is not my own, but his that sent me. And Let's, yes, sir. Where was that you just read? That was John chapter 14, verse 26. Sorry. Flipping over to chapter 16 in John. Chapter 16 and verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. Let's flip over to chapter 17 of John. He's praying to the Father in, in verse 17 of chapter 17. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth sanctify these believers by the truth by your word which is the truth let's flip back to John chapter 8 John chapter 8 and verse 31 then said Yeshua unto those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then he goes on to say that he that sins is a slave of sin. So continuing in his word will set you free from a life of sin. So let's do a little recap here. You receive the living water. The living water comes out of you. And the living water draws you to the word. Teaches you the word. Empowers you to obey the word. And sanct sanctifies you. Sets you apart from everything else. Let's go over to 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1 starting in verse 22 first Peter 1 22 seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Yahweh which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower thereof falls away but the word of Yahweh endures forever. And this is the word which by the good news is preached unto you. So the word that's preached unto you is the word of Yahweh which endures forever. But a lot of people in the mainstream aren't teaching that the word of Yahweh endures forever. They're teaching that most of the word is obsolete done away with nailed to a cross only applies to the Jews hmm. so I quoted earlier he said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of Yahweh let's flip back to James chapter 1 James 1 Verse 18, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 
for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of Elohim. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. And be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, and goes his way, and straight forth forgets what manner of man he was. So over and over we hear in scriptures this word, this word that endures forever, this word that is engrafted. In 2 Timothy 3, Second Timothy chapter 3 starting in verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. And I'm telling you that these holy scriptures are the same word that we've been reading about. The New Testament was not in compilation at this time. These are letters, a commentary on helping us understand the word. From a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Messiah Yeshua. All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Elohim may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, and I'm going to go to one more spot in uh, Matthew chapter 5. Still talking about the Word. The Messiah is telling us about the Word in Matthew 5. He, in verse, I'm not going to cover all of it, but in verse 13, he says, You're the salt. In verse 15, excuse me, 14, he says, You're the light. 15, you can't, you can't, you don't need to hide the light. Verse 16, let your light shine so that they can see your good works. Your good works are the light. And then he starts talking about the word. Think not that I have come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Don't take out the smallest letter or stroke of the pen. But that's what we like to do. We like to, you know, human beings, religions, we like to remove parts, add things to it, or only do what applies. But out of Messiah's own mouth, he said it all needs to stay intact. And Moses over in Deuteronomy, let's go there. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're going to close out here in just a minute. Deuteronomy chapter 4, starting in verse 1. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh Elohim of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim which I command you. The way to keep the commandments is by not adding to it or taking from it. If you add to it, you can't keep the commandments. If you take from it, you can't keep the commandments. And I'm going to close out here with this, this thought here. In Exodus chapter 20, we see the words coming out of the Father's mouth. The Ten Commandments. And they didn't want to hear it after that. They said, speak to Moses and we'll hear it from Moses. So the word came from Moses and Moses relayed it to the people. And they said, all that he has said we will do. Now, we talked about the water 
goes to the highest points in the mountains first and then it flows down and eventually evaporates up into the clouds. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 starting in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Master, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. He is going to send them with power to spread that living water. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yeshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The word made flesh went up into a cloud. And he's going to return the same way. The word of Yahweh was spoken from the mountain. And it's going to happen again. Isaiah chapter 2. The word will rain down again. Isaiah chapter 2 starting in verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh to the house of the Elohim of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem his word will be poured out on the mountains again and in Ezekiel it talks about the flocks coming to the mountains to be fed and I want, to, I want to give this one last little illustration. I had, had a little praise report. And as I meditated on this praise report, I was like, well, that kind of fits. Let me share that. Um, my dad, well, my, my grandfather was into farming. And he had a hay ring out on the farm. The whole family got out of farming. And I'm the only person that wants to be in it. And uh, so they were just getting rid of their stuff. And he said, there's an old hay ring out there. And my brother said, well, there's an old lawnmower out there in the barn, and, and they're going to scrap it. I've got way too many projects. I don't feel like working on it and trying to fix it. My dad said, if you don't want it, we're going to take it to the, the junkyard. And I said, well, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. And I went out there, and it was one of those old snapper with the bicycle handlebars on it. And some people, some people say that's an oldie but a goodie. Well, uh, we brought it to the house, and it was kind of rusty looking. And uh, I looked in the gas tank, it was bone dry. And I, I lifted up and looked underneath. The blade was brand new. Brand new, looked like it never even been used. I checked the oil. The oil was crystal clear and extremely viscous, like it had never been run with that oil before. I put a little gas in it and uh, put uh, some starter cables on the, the battery. And I, I hit the start button, nothing happened. I got to looking at it and I saw a little wire down there that looked like it was disconnected. I, I put the wire back where it seemed like it was supposed to go. I hit the button, nothing happened. 
Then I looked over and I saw the, the key, the ignition switch was in the off position. I said, well, let me put it. And I, by the way, I prayed over this lawnmower. I prayed over it before I got started on it. I put the key in the on switch. I pushed the ignition switch and rah, 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 crunk right up. I didn't put a dime into this lawnmower. But I had inherited lies. Not intentional, but I inherited them symbolically. Lies came from other people that, eh, it's trash. It's worthless. It's old. It's obsolete. I don't feel like doing it. And it's the same lies we get from the front of the scriptures. All you got to do is search it out for yourself, test it out, and it works. Hallelujah.